Hello and welcome in this session on collaborative learning. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for your course Learning and Teaching. And I hope that you are enjoying the videos and enjoying the modules and our journey will move on together towards the destination which we have decided. You all may agree with the fact that learning is not always very individualistic. Rather, learning is a social act means when students get opportunity to interact with others either with peers or with teachers or with the members of the society they learn better so we can say that when there are opportunities to learn together they learn better and one such technique is collaborative learning which we often use in our classrooms and outside of the classrooms to help our learners to construct their own meaning, to construct their ideas, and to learn together. So let us first analyze certain definitions of collaborative learning and try to analyze, so what is collaborative learning? There are many definitions of collaborative learning and one such definition was given by Smith and McGregor in 1992. According to them, collaborative learning is an umbrella term for a variety of educational approaches involving joint intellectual effort by students or students and teachers together. Means this definition is suggesting that in collaborative learning, either students learn collaboratively with each other, with peers, or students and teachers work together to learn something, to evolve with some meaning or to construct the knowledge. Let us see a few more definitions. Another very famous definition of collaborative learning was given by Lal and Lal in 2012. And according to them, collaborative learning is an educational approach to teaching and learning that involves group of learners working together to solve a problem, complete a task or create a product. Means Lal and Lal focusing on the involvement of groups of learners where learners are working together to solve any problem or complete any task or create any new product. Similarly, one very famous definition is given by Jarlak. According to Jarlak, collaborative learning is based on the idea that learning is naturally social act in which participants talk among themselves. So can you analyze all these three definitions and come to a conclusion? Let us try. If you analyze all three definitions, you will come across an idea that collaborative learning is a situation in which two or more persons try to learn together. So there may be two learners in form of a peer group or there may be a small group or larger group of learners. And when they learn together, they basically use the skills and resources of each other. So if one learner is having one skill and another learner is having another skill, if one learner having one uh, source or resource and another learner having another type of resource, so they share their resources, they learn skills from each other, they share the knowledge, they criticize each other's view and guide each other to learn. So what is in the collaborative learning? There is knowledge sharing, understanding, solving a problem, or cumulative effort by a group of people for creating something new. So I hope that now you are able to understand what collaborative learning means. Let us think about the theoretical foundation of collaborative learning. Actually the roots of collaborative learning are in the zone of proximal development which was propounded by Lev Vygotsky in his social constructivist theory. So what Vygotsky was saying that in zone of proximal development, there are three things. First area where any learner can do any work without any help. The second area where work is possible if guidance and counseling is provided to the learner. And third is work is not possible even after help. So what is our effort? we try to facilitate our learners to come from first to second level. So if collaborative learning environment is created, 
अंडर जेट पीडी और अंडर जोन ऑफ प्रोक्सिमल डेवलपमेंट नॉलेज स्किल्स एंड एप्टीट्यूड एक्विशन कैन बी इंश्योर After analyzing the definitions of collaborative learning, can you identify some significant points, or are you able to analyze the significance of collaborative learning in teaching learning, or in classroom instruction, or in the teaching learning scenario of your school or classroom? Let us try to find certain points which are there to explain the significance of collaborative learning in teaching learning. The first point is that collaborative learning is a method of training through which technical and managerial skills can be developed at workplace. This significance of collaborative learning has been highlighted by many industrial practitioners. Similarly, if people are living in remote areas and if they can work together by using technology at virtual platforms, they can solve many problems. nowadays in the technology era the collaborative learning efforts are taking place on many online learning platforms and virtual platforms where people collaborate together though they are not working at the same place they are at their own place one may be in one corner of the country another may be at another corner of the country but both can collaborate using any technology platform and work together to solve a problem so understanding of the cultural diversities and modification of the behavior should also be emphasized in collaborative learning you must have heard about cooperative learning and very often people get confused between collaborative learning and cooperative learning and at many places these two terms means collaborative learning and cooperative learning are being used interchangeably but these are not same let us try to understand what is the difference between collaborative learning and cooperative learning before moving further to discuss different aspects of collaborative learning if you see the table on one side it is cooperative learning on another side of the table it is collaborative learning so in cooperative learning it is the teacher who decides about the group who assign the roles who observe the progress and who facilitate wherever students required his or her help but in collaborative learning it is not the teacher but the participants who decide their role they decide their responsibility and they move towards the teacher or they approach to the teacher when they feel it is required so cooperative learning is kind of teacher centered approach but collaborative learning is more learner centered in cooperative learning the student learns social skill and working on a project or working on a concept in group but it is assumed in collaborative learning that participants already have necessary skills to work in a group so they don't work on the skills they work on the concept or the problem or the issue which they need to resolve in cooperative learning assessment is more inclined towards group performance because they have their shared goals to achieve but in collaborative learning individual assessment is equally important as the group assessment in cooperative learning learners organize learning experiences to achieve a common goal but in collaborative learning objective of learning sometimes is personal progress with the support of others also say that in collaborative learning many times a learner who is not having the knowledge or the skills up to a requisite level can take help of his or her peer and progress personally too in cooperative learning diversity is essential in the groups because teacher identify the groups and teacher frame the groups but in collaborative learning because learners or the participants themselves frame the group so many time the common interest prevail over diversity so these are few common differences between cooperative learning and collaborative learning i hope it will help you in understanding both the concepts in different domain now let us talk about what are the strategies for collaborative learning which you can use in your classroom the first strategy is think pair share what we do in this in this a problem related to higher order thinking ability is introduced to the learners by the teacher then 
all learners are provided 5 minutes so that they can respond properly to the solution of the problem individually so they think about the possible solution of the problem proposed by the teacher after it they are given time for sharing their thinking with peers in small groups so they frame certain pairs and they discuss about the same problem with their peer group when they share their ideas in the peer group they not only share but they also have to listen the other's idea and discuss it with other classmates after that they reach to a consensus on appropriate method for solution of a problem so at the end of the class the whole group shared related processes and outcomes of the discussion during the follow up discussion so initially individual think then he or she share with his or her peer in a pair and then they share with the whole class and whole class discuss about the solution so this is a very effective technique which you can use to promote collaborative learning in your classroom second very effective technique is catch up so what happens in catch up here teacher stops suddenly during a lecture suppose you are giving or you are delivering any lecture in your classroom and students are taking notes so what do you do you just stop for 2 minutes or 3 minutes and ask the learners to compare their notes with the other classmates or you can ask certain questions on doubtful points for clarity you can start question answer session or you can motivate your learners to ask the question and let learners of the other group give the answer every time a teacher is not expected to give the answer of the questions raised by the learner rather some learners raise the question and learners of the same group or other group should try to answer those questions so in this way they learn collaboratively third very famous technique is fist bowl debate what is in it generally we make three groups of the learners in this technique then the group who is sitting on the right side can talk in the favor of the concept or favor of the idea which you have proposed and the left side group may be in the opposition or it can be vice versa but there is always a group which is sitting in the middle row so that group is basically asked to note down the thoughts of the both groups and determine who has put facts strong reasons effectively and come to a conclusion all the groups are asked to present the reports and at the end they are asked to present the report before the class so this is a very good technique especially on the issues related to social sciences or society or the issues where debates are possible different views are possible contradictory views are possible you can use such techniques one very effective technique is case study in this what a teacher does a teacher basically prepares four or five case studies of same difficulty level then learners are divided into different groups and each group is provided with one case study and they should be provided time for analyzing then teacher can ask the progress report during their analysis and after completion of the work they present before the class because they learn in the group they share in the group they discuss in the group they learn collaboratively a very good approach is team based learning so what happens here learners are divided into groups by the teachers and assign some specific work like a book to study a laboratory work or to, or to find out a solution of some specific problem then they are asked to appear in the group examination after completion of the work a quiz can be used for the assessment purpose they have to answer on the basis of consensus in the group and also name the member who has suggested the answer and at last if required teacher explains the difficulties and resolve the misconceptions among the learner and after many such settings learner may be assigned some challenging problems also to find out the solution nowadays technology mediated collaborative learning is being used quite extensively so there are four ways through which technology mediated collaborative learning can work the first is collaborative network learning cln so here learners are at different place but you create a learning environment with the help of some electronic equipments you can use television you can use computer you can use mobile you can use laptop through which 
learners at different places come together on a network share their ideas to solve a problem and come out to a solution here what you can do you can organize some computer supported collaborative learning efforts you can create an environment with the help of computer and internet where learners can come together they can share their ideas about a problem they can contradict or counter the ideas about a problem by using the internet and come to a consensus so the third is wikipedia supported collaborative learning wscl as the name suggested here wikipedia plays a very important role it is a very good example of collaborative learning actually in wikipedia you know one page is being created by an individual but many people contribute to that page they come together they sh- share their knowledge about that concept they rectify if there are certain errors on that page and they come towards a problem solving so wikipedia supported collaborative learning is a very good example of technology mediated collaborative learning then nowadays we are using collaborative learning in virtual worlds you can use many things like skype 3d model any web conferencing tool any mind mapping tool or even google tools g suite has a lot of options which can be used for collaborative learning like google sheets google slides jamboard all those are there there are multiple options in the virtual world which can be used to promote collaborative learning in our classrooms so this is the time that let our learners learn to collaborate for learning so this is the time let our learners learn to collaborate by using technology or by using different collaborative learning techniques you can facilitate them to learn collaboratively because constructivism suggests that if more than two minds work together solution comes early solution is effective so let our learners explore the problem let them work together let them debate discuss contradict together and let them come out with a solution which is a collaborative effort of their group thank you very much